Welcome back. We're here for another Christmas adventure. Today we're here in Dayton, Ohio at Carillion Park. Getting ready to head in and experience Carillion's Christmas. So make sure you follow us as we head on this next adventure and get even more in the Christmas spirit. Follow us. Now let's get ready to explore Carillon Park, which is a great dedication to Dayton, Ohio. All the achievements that have happened in this very city, from the Wright brothers being the first to fly, which all started from the Wright Cycle Company right here in Dayton. And also the invention of the cash register by the Witte brothers that became the National Cash Register Company and all the businesses that came from that, such as Delco. And also, too, you had the invention by Charles Kettering and the Deeds Barn Gang when they created the self-ignition starter, which replaced the need of hand-cranking a car to start. You also had amazing inventions such as an ATM, self-checkouts, and many other modern innovations. So follow me as we head through this museum and check out a lot of local Dayton history. Now, here's an actual part of the wing of one of the Wright Flyers. Airplane elevator from a 1905. The cash register was first released in 1883 when it was invented by James Ritty, who owned a bar in Dayton, Ohio. He created this device to stop theft from employees. He was getting robbed blind. They invented what was originally called the incorruptible cashier. Ritty ended up selling the patent a year later in 1884 to John Patterson, who would then form the National Cash Register Company. Most likely, if you see a cash register in a museum, it will most likely be from the National Cash Register Company. Now let's talk about the Deeds Barn Gang. They were originally created on Edward Deeds' property. There was a group of engineers that tinkered and messed around creating a bunch of inventions but it would be the most important invention from Charles Kettering. Well, let's rewind a little bit. While working at NCR, Kettering electrified the cash register, which eliminated the use of a hand crank. So he was the perfect choice to help Edward Deeds and his engineers at the Deeds Barn. Kettering would eventually invent the automobile self-starter that would eliminate having to start an automobile by hand. That animatronics is eerie. Keeps giving the side eye to my nephew, Caden. Joker as we head through this museum and check out the Christmas lights. 
modern day printing all started in just southeast of Dayton, Ohio by Kodak. They developed a continuous inkjet printing which began in 1967 at the Mead Research Labs located southeast of Dayton. What's amazing about this museum is so many things were created first here in Dayton, Ohio. Like here, thanks to these people, the first pop top was uh, created by DRT. The NCR made a lot of crucial improvements to business here by doing like the cash register there, scanners. ATM, automated teller machines, personal computer, and a self-checkout. the famous Thompson submachine gun, aka the Tommy gun. Now it's time to turn our attention away from Dayton's impact on the world from an invention and innovation standpoint and turn to one of the most famous public enemy number ones the U.S. has ever seen, the one and only John Dillinger. His famous crime spree happened much of it in Dayton and the surrounding areas of Ohio. Now here's some amazing John Dillinger artifacts. This was the gun that was used by the police officer that arrested John Dillinger. And those are the handcuffs the police officer used to apprehend John Dillinger. And that's the very gun that John Dillinger had at his time of arrest. On June 21st, 1933, John Dillinger and three accomplices robbed the new Carlisle Bank, getting away with $10,600 which is the equivalent to $204,000 in today's money. This was the first of several bank robberies Dillinger and his gang committed over the next 13 months. Next, they robbed the Citizens National Bank in Bluffton, Ohio on August 14, 1933, getting away with $6,000. Shortly before his arrest in Dayton, Ohio, John Dillinger broke his accomplices out of the Indiana State Prison the next bank Dillinger and his gang robbed in his spree across Ohio was the first national bank in St. Mary's, Ohio. On October 3, 1933, they stole $12,000. And they would be the ones ultimately to break Dillinger out of the Allen County Jail in Lima, Ohio and kill Sheriff Sarber. I covered this topic in my Allen County Museum video. It wasn't one of my better videos, but if you want to see the display for Dillinger, check that out. And the final bank that he robbed in Ohio was the First National Bank in Fostoria, Ohio on May 3, 1934, stealing $17,000, his biggest haul in Ohio to date. The story of John Dillinger would end in front of the Biograph Theater in Chicago, Illinois on July 22, 1934. Well, we just got done here at the museum section here at Carillon Park. We're getting ready to head outside to all the outbuildings and the Christmas lights. And much more so continue to follow us if we have a sign. The Locust Grove School Number Twelve.
Now here's an awesome sundial. The way we used to keep time back in the days before clocks and all that. Pretty awesome to see one. There's a well over there. Next stop, Newcomb House. Typesets. This is the old swimming pool light tower. Well, I'm getting ready to head up to the Wright Brothers. It's and check out the old Wright Flyer. I believe it's the year 1905 Wright Flyer. So, and this is part of the National Park Service. So getting excited to check this out. I've already seen it once, but I can't wait to see my wife and my son check it out and my nephew, Caden. So follow us. This is the model of Wright Cycle Company's bike, the Van Cleave. And the Van Cleave was the first model. The Wrights named it after their paternal great-great-grandmother. Wind tunnel that they use to study for lift. Here is the amazing Wright Flyer 1905 model. This was the Wright brothers' third flyer, and on May 14th, 1908, they flew this very plane in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, and Wilbur crashed into the sand. The flyer was left damaged for years in a North Carolina hangar. And after almost 40 years, Orville requested the return of the plane and its parts in 1946 to restore the flyer and put it on display at Deeds Carillon Park. Thanks to these efforts, we get to see this awesome plane. race for a patent. Here's a check that was written to the Wright's attorney to secure a patent for their 1903 Wright Flyer. Well, just got done checking out the 1905 Wright Flyer for a history nerd like myself. That was an amazing experience. Um, for anybody that appreciates aviation or history or the Wright brothers, or just want to see something cool, make sure you come to Carillon Park and check that out. We still have a lot more to see, so make sure you keep following us as we check out more of these outbuildings and the Christmas lights here at the Carillon Christmas. We're heading towards the Cover Bridge.
Welcome to the Brevin Towers. Let's head up there and check out and get an amazing view. Well, me and Caden's up here at the, on top of the Brethren Tower here at Carillon Park. We're both out of shape, winded, out of breath, but well worth it. Pretty amazing views. So what do you think of it, Caden? Yeah, it was, uh, I guess it felt fine, but we got up here and it's uh, pretty cool to the lights So continue to follow us as we check out more of Carillon Park and Carillon Christmas. Follow us. Okay, I don't see a sign for it, but if I had a guess, that's a Rome wagon. Pretty neat. Man, look at this. They even have the lights here on the outside. Person set up there. What do they say, Caden? What do they say? All the boat! Now let's head into the caboose. Now let's head into the Dayton Cyclery. A little bit of history on bicycles. Wow, there's a tandem bike with three seats. Bicycles started right here in Dayton, Ohio. Huffy's on the move, Caden. Be happy. Go, Huffy. Petting 
now getting ready to head into the great 1913 flood exhibit building. Star American flag. Police and fire departments save people during the flood in boats such as these. Head in this building and check out some old vehicles. Dayton Sales Co. Here's a Hatfield 1908. And there's a Speedwell 1910. Some of these car manufacturers I've never heard of old sales room would have looked like. And there's a national cash register created right here in Dayton, Ohio. There's a service manager. Now let's check out the showroom. Here's an Xenia 1914. That's a pretty cool looking car. And there's a Lambert 1909. There's Maxwell 1923s. Now I have heard of the Stoddard Manufacturing Company. And there's a Stoddard 1908. 
Now these are the Waves Cabin, kind of similar to the WASP uh, women air units in uh, World War II. They had women at the home front called Waves doing code breaking operations. And they were cabins such as these here outside of Dayton. Circa 1943, Edward Deeds opened the residential cabins at Sugar Camp, built several years early as a summer school for sales personnel to house the waves. The woman accepted for voluntary emergency service. Well, we just got done here at Carillon Park doing the Christmas extravaganza here. We checked out the museum, then we came out to all these outbuildings. We've seen a lot of amazing things, had a great time. If you ever get the opportunity, make sure you come down to Dayton, Ohio and check out Carillon Park, especially during the Christmas season. It's an amazing time. I want to thank you all for watching. Until the next one, and Merry Christmas. Now here's the star of Carolyn Christmas. Yeah. <laughs>